congratulations on this film and going to Sundance again. Um, for those who don't know what The Blazing World is, can you tell us a little bit about the, the movie? Sure. Um, so uh, it follows a young woman uh, named Margaret as she's um, about to take her own life. But before before she goes through with it, she's uh, sort of dragged to this secret inner world um, by Udo Kier to confront the traumas that are, are um, sort of keeping her underwater in a depression, so to speak. So um, for me, the film is about grappling with depression and the inward kind of uh, journey that one faces to overcome that force. And I wanted to explore, you know, explore the process of, of, of grief and um, explore where that kind of sadness came from for this character. And, um, you know, I, I also love horror and, and kind of elevated genre. So I wanted to make it as psychological and fantastical as possible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was definitely, it was, it was captivating to say the least, like right away, just the images and the colors and stuff like that. Um, I know it stems from a dream that you had. It, can you tell me what was it about that dream that you felt like, and then when you discovered what it was about, so that made you feel like you wanted to tell this story? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, I, it started as a recurring, a, sort of a series of recurring dreams that I had been having um, a, a, f a few years ago, like I, believe in like 2015, 16. And I um, immediately, you know, got out a pen and paper next to my, my bedside table and just like would, would jot down what I was seeing in these dreams. And um, I, I, I really sort of in, in fleshed that in the short film, but in the years to follow, it would be a process of really excavating those dreams and just trying to figure out what my subconscious was trying to um, get me to explore. Mm -hmm. And trusting that process, which is, you know, I don't know, maybe it sounds a little abstract, but it's just, uh, it's just interesting to sort of explore that dream world. And um, yeah, it was, it's really cool how it all came together. Definitely. So how did it compare making the short film in comparison to the feature? Two different beasts. Um, you know, the short was obviously two days and a very you know, a, sh a short script and uh, the feature is a proper uh, length film. So just all of the challenges that come with making a film in the first place, it's very involved, uh, you know, anytime something gets made, it's a miracle, really. I mean, there's yeah. just so, there's so many things that, that must come together for it. And then on top of that, we had a pandemic crash down on us. So it was um, it was challenging. We had to overcome a lot of obstacles and get really creative in the way that we shot um, and the way that we spent our time uh, while we were shooting. Um, we all lived on a little quarantine camp outside of Austin mm -hmm. and just made it happen. It was it was a really insular way of of shooting a film, but it was very cool. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I didn't even realize. So it was during the pandemic that you shot the feature. Yeah. Oh. That's right. Yeah, we shot in August. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> in the yeah. thick of it there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. Well, you can't tell. It looks great. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, something else. Just because I'm I'm a big cat person, and I love the cat in the beginning. Is with like the kind of the flat. Is that your cat? That's my cat. That's my girl Arwen. <laughs> She's uh, she's a star, clearly. <laughs> I, I thought um, she was so cute. <laughs> yeah, she's really cute. She's like a proper, um, you know, look, don't touch kind of a cat. She's She knows how beautiful she is. I'll just put it that way. Oh, okay. Well, I was wondering, did you incorporate any other, um, either things or people from your personal life in this film? Yeah, I think every, every time you write something, there are bits and pieces of your real life that, that shine through. And, um, you know, there, there's, there's little details uh, here and there that are for sure just ripped straight out of my life. Um, there's uh, the book, the book placement and a lot of like production design detail, uh, little things like that. And then obviously, um, 
you know, there are bigger things too in there, but it was really fun to, to put like my favorite books in, in a scene or, you know, make a big moment if she's reading the, the Silmarillion, I'm like huge Middle Earth freak. So mm -hmm. it was, um, it was fun. It was fun to do little details like that. Yeah. What is your favorite book? Well, in Blazing World, she's reading the Silmarillion and then the character Blake has this big speech about what that's, what, what that means to him it, during this, this time in, in the film. And mm -hmm. um, my favorite book, I, I mean, I don't really know if I could even say that I have a favorite book, but this, the reason I put the Silmarillion in the Blazing World feature was because it, it, it moved me in such a profound way as a child. So yeah, um, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I will say that I thought the film was just shot so beautifully, like just again, the colors, the music, it was it was almost like poetic, I would feel mm -hmm. like. Um, but I was curious, was there a scene that you particularly enjoyed shooting? Um, you know, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the scene at um, the woods at the kind of nightclub uh, lounge place yeah. where that's kind of an interesting thing. It was supposed to be like a, a bustling, you know, bar slash club. And then we were like, well, what if we just make it empty? And she kind of just keeps commenting on it's empty. And then that, that really actually resonated very true, um, you know, kind of it lent itself to that eerie dreamscape of something's always just just to skosh off in your dreams. So that was a really fun scene to shoot because we, you know, got to got to direct a lot of different awesome actors and see what they were going to do. And you know, it was a contained film where where you know there's there's never more than like two two people in a scene. So that one was fun because there was multiple people. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny. And that makes sense. I didn't even think about it. I was just I fit with the movie so well. I was like, yeah, I guess, you know, something weird's going on here. <laughs> There's yeah, just nobody yeah. at the bar. Right, um, right. Um, another interesting part of the film, I actually really, even though it was like hard to watch them, but I enjoyed the parents' relationship just to yeah. see because I was I was really curious about why they were like that. Like just from the start, they were very tumultuous yeah. and just yes, I mean, yes. can you talk a little bit more about yeah. them and what yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the parents, obviously there's the initial kind of trauma that happens at the beginning of the story, mm -hmm. but then everything after that is a reflection of that trauma. So the way that the character Margaret perceives her parents is in this like loop in her head. Um, and I, the more that I learned about uh, how trauma is stored in the brain, and that often when we are retracing broken neural pathways, we, we tend to see things in sort of this, um, you know, off kilter way. And so I was, I was trying to kind of personify that broken neural pathway that she is retracing over and over again as she, uh, as she goes home. Um, so it, the parents are, victims of Margaret's mind just as much as she is because that I think that you see that nicely at the end not to not to give anything away but mm -hmm. I do think it's a subtle but nice moment at the end where you see that they're not actually those people and they really want to be loved and accepted too so yeah yeah this I I did really like the ending and I will say that that's you kind of felt that especially with um her mom too it's mm -hmm. just like I felt it was like they actually really love Margaret is what I yeah. sense throughout the whole film yes. they want they wanted yes. her there and around yes, yes. Yeah. exactly yeah. um so I am wondering just uh because I do have some other questions I wanted to ask as far as like a get to know Carlson kind of questions but before I get to that I want to ask what do you hope audiences take away from the blazing world I um you know, I, I hope I hope people like it, but I, I if if nothing else, I think maybe it would it would be nice for, you know, just to put put the audience in an introspective place of maybe maybe reflecting on on their own childhoods or dynamics with their family, maybe thinking about the idea of we repeat what we don't repair. So um you know, and, and, and 
And sometimes all we need to do is reframe, not really make structural changes, but just kind of view something from a different perspective. So, yeah, I like that. That's very true. I never thought about it that way. We do kind of repeat what we don't repair. That's, that's, that's a good thought. Yeah. Uh, well, um, yeah, I'm just going to ask you a few kind of like sort of rapid fire, but you don't have to be fast on these answers, but just so we can get to know you better. Um, I know you're from Fort Worth, Texas. So I was wondering, uh, what was always your favorite place to eat at in DFW? Ooh, favorite place to eat. Tokyo Cafe was a big one for me um, growing up. Um, was that in Fort Worth? Like, yeah, that's Fort Worth. Oh, OK. Yeah, I'm from from Fort Worth, like proper Fort Worth. I feel like Tokyo Cafe was a big staple. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I mean, I don't, it's like been a minute, like since since I really experienced, I, I've been really enjoying seeing Fort Worth kind of um, bloom into this really kind of cool little scene. Um, yeah. I love like Magnolia Street and and all of all of the restaurants there. I love Shinjuku Station too. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun to go back to 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 Fort Worth and see how how much everything has grown. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't say everyone loves the stockyards. So like there's yeah. like a barbecue place over there that yeah. everybody loves. I know. Like I, I I always like I had a weird experience in the stockyards when I was like little. It like kind of scared me. Oh, really? Like, they staged like a shootout. Oh and it, was, it was like a field trip or something. I can't remember. <laughs> but ever since then I was just like, I'm suspicious. Yeah. Um but uh, yeah, obviously a staple, the stock here. Yeah, definitely. So um, who is your childhood celebrity crush? Childhood celebrity crush? Probably Leonardo DiCaprio. That's a good one. That's a solid one. Um, and how would you describe your high school experience? Uh, a really, really good high school experience. Um, I went to Fort Worth Country Day. It was kindergarten and 12th grade. So like it was a significant chunk of my life and um, high school was was great. I, I still have a lot of amazing friends from high school and maybe if I could go back in time, I would have taken maybe not such, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have cared so much about things that don't matter, but you know, it doesn't yeah. matter what high school <laughs> right right and final question the blazing world world is a pretty trippy movie and i was just wondering is there uh another movie that is just as like trippy that always has stayed with you trippy movie that's always stayed with me probably like 70s italian giallo horror like something like suspiria yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time again to talk to me. It's really great talking with you. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. Thanks.